Well, it's November the 2nd. Our first Friday Forum speakers today have informed us, thank goodness, that Christmas is definitely going to come this year. We had with us Alan Gale from Trusco Capital Management. We had Scott Krugman from the National Retail Federation. And, of course, our moderator again this year was Greg Gilligan from the Richmond Times Dispatch. I just want to let you know that this forecast is good for the next five minutes. Um, I'm going to quote some statistics from the Federal Reserve Bank of Richmond. They have a great research staff. I was talking with them this week. Now, the, the information that I'm going to show here and some of their comments from their latest survey uh, are going to have a negative tint to it. And you have to remember, this is for the whole 5th Federal Reserve District, which includes North Carolina, South Carolina, and, and the like. What they showed is that there was some softening in retail sales as we went into October. We know that weather was relatively warm and that has an impact on it. There was a fall off in shopper traffic and that's something of a concern. Um, the good news is you guys are doing good work. You're keeping your inventories under control. Um, you're not getting overly optimistic, and one of the things, quite candidly, is you're making sure that you're keeping your costs under control. There is some expectation nationally that we are going to see some softening. Now, it's important to remember here that the national outlook reflects a lot of concerns that we have out there, a lot of weakness in the housing and the like. If I can put a little bit of a Richmond spin on this, the news is much more encouraging. The housing market here is a lot more solid than it is nationally. Uh, we're finding oh, there's some good news on, on the employment front. Overall, Richmond has been holding up very well. Uh, we've got some good news about, for example, the expansion in Fort Lee. That's, that's going to be adding jobs in, into the area uh, for, for some time now. Uh, it looks like Altria is going to be uh, moving some production capacity here as well. So there are some special things to the Richmond area that looks like uh, that we can maintain some forward momentum in here. So I think if you have some optimism in this room, I think that it's justified. But I do think that there are some national headwinds that are going to seep through the window sills and, uh, and, and, and dampen spirits somewhat. And we need to be aware of that. And the survey suggests that you guys are on top of it. Let's get right straight to the outlook. Um, we have to remember that the, the economy has been in an expansion for six years. So we need to keep that in perspective. We've got some headwinds. Uh, we've got a weaker housing market. We have higher energy costs. I think that's going to be something of an issue. And we also have a softer job market. So if you take the national headwinds and the good news that we have, relatively speaking here locally, nationally, I think we're going to have more of a humbug year, quite frankly. Because of the relatively good uh, news here locally, I think it's going to be more of a ho-hum. So I think it's going to be a decent year. I don't think it's going to be anything to, to write home about, but I think that it's going to be better than the national average. Um, so in terms of going forward, we do think that the economy is going through a soft patch. We're not looking for a recession, but we are looking for soft growth. We think the economy is going to start to find its footing as we go through the spring and into the summer next year. Uh, we're expecting overall inflation to remain under control on a core standpoint. And as long as we don't eat or drive our car, we'll be fine. <laughs> As a retired teacher, it's going to affect me greatly. I have a grandchild. Greatly concerned, but obviously I don't make the purchasing decisions, so it's not going to really affect my, my attitude about buying things. Prices are going up, but I don't think it will affect my holiday shopping too much. We always try to make holidays lots of fun. Um, I heard the economy isn't doing so well in terms of shopping and everything, but um, I don't think it will affect our Christmas shopping at all, even though the husband over there um, doesn't want to spend any money. <laughs> well, I guess it could be better, uh, but people spend what they have. And that's what I do. I spend what I have. I don't go overboard. The economy, I think, is it sucks. <laughs> um, it has impacted my shopping. I'm not doing as much shopping this year as I usually do. Um, as Alan's pointed out, over the last six years, we've seen great economic expansion. 
So NRF is forecasting 4% growth this holiday season, 474.5 billion dollars. I've, I've got that committed to memory. Um, what does that mean though? Uh, it, it, it means it's going to be an okay season. So when NRF does predict, we look at a variety of economic indicators, we, we look at the job market, wage growth, we're looking at the housing market, uh, we're looking at the stock market performance, gas prices, <clears throat> things that are going to impact consumers. Uh, I think sometimes there's a danger at looking at a single economic indicator in a vacuum. In past years we've heard gas prices are high, consumers won't spend. That, it's hardly the case that one single economic indicator is going to make that much of a difference. In this case, though, the housing market, as Alan pointed out, is a big difference maker in that um, in the past few years, consumers have really derived a lot of their spending power from the values in their home. Well, refinancings are the thing of the past. So more and more consumers are going to be relying on their bank accounts. They're going to be relying on their, they're going to be relying on their wage and income. And fortunately, right now, job market seems to be good. Wage growth seems to be strong. That bodes well immediately for the consumer. We, we asked consumers how much they're spending this year, and they told us roughly $923. Uh, that would represent a 3.7% increase over last year, what they said they were spending last year. In line with NRF, uh, she, she, again, she's going to be conservative, and her shopping patterns reflect that. The number one choice in terms of what consumers want for Christmas, according to our survey, gift cards. What the heck happened? Gift cards, uh, the most impersonal gift ever. But it's, people like receiving them. Um, people like making those decisions. And the fact that it's number one this year, it tells us that consumers are in a practical place, almost like they're asking for cash. Um, they want, it's a practical gift to help them with their practical purchases. So all in all, it's, gosh, it's so hard to categorize this holiday season with just one word. Um, so I won't. But uh, we, we certainly, uh, we, we do, we are predicting 4%, but it's not cataclysmic. The sky is not falling. Given the, re the, the current economic realities that we're facing, I, I think any retailer would gladly take 4% this year. And in fact, we, we do expect many retailers to beat that forecast. So I, I wish you guys a very happy and good luck this, this holiday season. Thank you. As always, thanks for being with us. Networking is a big part of what this association is all about. As you can see from these pictures, people like to get together. And now it's a good topic to talk about the economy and the holiday season. Thanks for being with us. Happy holidays.